I feel that most of us, when we think about the occult, we picture rooms with a handful of people staffing some ritualistic practice, robed or draped with odd vestments, with particular sayings and procedures all practiced, and possibly passed down for a few or even hundreds of generations. Maybe we see a building that has been dedicated to not only those people, but to a group which they represent a portion of. Or possibly we have some set space, like a large grove of trees, a chapel made from nature's own growths, with pews of downed logs and tables of old oak stumps. But nowadays, that seems pretty far from the truth. Brick and mortar establishments really seem a thing of the past. And the occult is taught openly among interested individuals in a discussion format. Or some seek to be educators over our new mediums, which means that times have simply changed for the Western tradition. So today we're going to ask a few questions. What happened to organized occultism? What have we gained? What have we lost? And where are we going? With all that being said, my name is River, and welcome to the Nimiton. Let me know your thoughts, and don't forget to like and subscribe, because the overwhelming majority don't. Thank you. Alright, the first glaring point is, hey, things are just different than the way they used to be. There's a shift in information availability and also a shift in common philosophy to cover. That change in philosophy is the acceptance of the personal revelation, in contrast to the rigidity of the systematic developments we see in older styles. Instead of, I should say, instead of being bestowed some titles, rights, or degrees, we all seem to be in the world of self-initiation. Not that self-initiation isn't a big part of the organized occult circuit, but that one's own take holds more validity in our world of sharing and self-vindication. This shift occurred earlier than we might think, even before the big guy who altered our accessibility to information. Like anything, we can see this philosophy blossoming in the New Age movement of the 70s, which founded itself on spiritual discovery propagated by earlier individuals like Hume, Yeats, and Hall in the early 1900s. Not that these individuals didn't have a stake in more organized systems, especially Yeats, who had a lot to do with the development of the Golden Dawn, but that these molders of the coming minds would see their wisdoms and develop completely independent and personal styles out of them, paired with the free thought of the new age, and then bang, you've got an explosion of personality, creativity, and, well, no need for really building your own totally limiting titles and degrees, man. In essence, a sort of old school nihilism. But then, Clearly, something really took off that would not only empower the individual thinker in these fields, it empowered literally everyone to be an author. Everyone could be a teacher, a creator, or a guru, for better or for worse. And that big thing is quite clearly the internet. You know, it's hard to say whether or not we even needed to say this, but as mentioned earlier, information accessibility has played one of the biggest roles in expanding esoterica which we can simply blame, the internet. All those types mentioned above, teachers, creators, gurus, etc., all find a metaphorical building in which to spill their now personalized system of occult thought. I mean, the divergence was well underway prior to what we have now, so this is more of a assistant to showing just how wild everything had gotten, just how specific and stylized everything had become. To no one's surprise, large groups have arrived online for the sake of community rallied under the common interest of the occult, of course broken down into subgroups for specific belief systems or simply some sort of common group to be shared replacing the face-to-face -face engagements of yesteryear. We see online the attempt, normally as a formality or fun idea of mirroring some of those older organized ideas like rights, titles, and grades by assigning them to people. But, as said, it's more for fun, or just a way to distinguish people who've been around for a year, or people who just showed up to the party. That, and the learning system shifted to match internet habits. I mean, 
We don't see tons of formal classes or learning periods or dished out necessary things to read and learn before progressing to some other stage. Rather, we see the providing of information to suit the interest of the individual learner. And that's the real change. No more constructive progressing to a new grade, but measuring up against oneself in the area you simply choose to learn. And we do see gatekeepers online that can't really dictate what a person does, thinks, or chooses to learn, nor can they really reasonably claim any sort of authority, which personally I think is fantastic. It has its ups and downs, but it's another degradation of that formal system we saw in the earlier days of organized esoterica and mystery schools. So essentially, the buildings and groups started to dissolve out of a loss for their necessity. They faded as their upholders aged out of attendance, and the newer generations seemed to have little need for their existence. Of course, plenty of lodges or groups still exist and have physical locations, but you'll often hear time and again about how things just aren't as they used to be. I mean, just look at the odd fellows. Not that they're necessarily a magical society, but they're blurred into history as a piece of obscure fraternal groups that exist as a smudge of their former self. With all this, we're kind of required to notice that with information available, buildings disappearing, and the apparent loss of need for formal guidance, then there was a change in the social demands of occultists. While it's nice to consider the idea of meeting together and discussing things in a mythical Hogwarts kind of way, it simply can't be maintained easily. It requires capital, and to be frank, most heavy occultists I know didn't get into it to figure out why they're so rich but rather to find something they felt was missing from their life. I think it can't really be understated, though, that another big shift isn't just in occultism, but just worldly things outside of us. Barring economics, cults. I mean, cults happened. Not that they're intrinsically related to the occult, even given the name, but yeah, crazy cult mentalities have only ever helped to steer away the worthwhile and frankly attract the odd individual who essentially wants to join the Illuminati, looking for purpose, power, and fundamentally some sense of belonging, which is a sad turn for the overall state of esoterica. It empowers users and leads to lies being stronger than truth, at least at face value. Anyways, we lightly looked at what happened but we didn't really discuss exactly what's going on in terms of did we lose anything? Did we really gain anything? And obviously, the short answer is yes to both. As mentioned earlier, we got an amazing advantage over our predecessors, the almighty PDF, along with access to digitized information that might have taken years to compile but are now present as quick and easy digestibles online, given you're looking in the right places, of course. We aren't even restricted by physical barriers of travel or time, but the minds of others readily exist through a screen for both learning and social engagement, and that's a serious power. But it has its parallel cons. We lost the more immediate development of relationships with like-minded occultists that may be for the better. Being able to share real-time experience in a more human social style, which is arguably better for learning certain things, Say, for example, how to actually incorporate occultism into your daily life. Then again, we also dodge the possibility uh, of draining in bad circumstances uh, of certain engagements, like feeling trapped by an egomaniac in an organization that we earnestly want to be a part of. It'd just be so much better if they weren't around, sort of thing. Another positive is surely availability of time, as brought up earlier. Internet occultism never sleeps, nor does it really need to hold your hand, so you walk your own way at your own pace on your own time. There's no need for a rigidity of Tuesday meetups at your local weirdos convention, yet it can be argued that we collectively lose structure. There's no formal guidance normally, and you can't always effectively learn a system, at least a system that has time built into it. Now, with this change in philosophy and all this openness, kind of birthed the chaos as we know it. Not that I'm speaking ill of chaos magic, 
but these qualities are what actually open the gates to this philosophy because you open-endedly take what is worthwhile to you, which is also decided by you for your sake, etc. It's simply the resulting nature of these things. And that all really begs the question, where is the occult going? What does it look like in the next century? It's practically unanswerable, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to take a crack at it. I believe that the more antiquated to 1900s occultism will see a further rise in popularity and acceptance in contrast to what is considered more commonly absurd today. People make religions and fits about everything obscure and unfounded, thus the lesser connections will fade and antiquated occultism will be more like a sociological view of people at that time, a study of their philosophy and its relevance to our modern state. I think that online occultism will remain as it is, but experience a surge in large, domineering, organized groups akin to many religions that offer online access as a means to garner more support and members, along with the power that it yields to present oneself to more people faster and more effectively than a brick-and-mortar approach ever could. I suspect that there will be a greater divide among esotericists as some go the route of New Age mentalities and some hold off to uphold older generations of thinkers like Maimonides, Luria, Crowley, Hall, and Philo. I know that occultism will overall be just more popular as it has wormed some of its minor ideas into the rooms of yoga classes and bridged into the general talking points of many otherwise disinterested people. Its place is eternal in the human experience, but how it is represented by the people is what will truly determine its future. I don't ever expect brick and mortar to return and overpower the online platform, except in very special cases, such as modern snake oil salesmen, uh, backed by the popularity of famous individuals who prey on the mind of impressionable and needy people, which we already have. As always, a massive thank you to my many friends, patrons, and supporters. I appreciate you more than you know. 